Here are bad ones. Cool. It looks like everything's live. Let me just quickly get my little uh, furry microphone out of the way. Um, and check over there, check over here. Uh, cool. Sorry, I'm just quickly doing an AV check because I am running alone today. And there we go. I can see it live. Awesome. Okay, cool. It appears everything is going well. Uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, today's episode or session or show of the AWS Africa um, Office Hours. Now, the purpose of this show is to answer any uh, questions that we have, and we don't limit it to just um, people from Africa. This is a uh, global show since we are streaming on the AWS channel as well as other locations. Um, so the, what I want to ask from those that are joining us is send me some technical questions and things you've been working on um, in the past um, few weeks and want, um, are curious about. Um, I'm also more than happy to chat about um, things like, for example, how it is to work at AWS, um, uh, uh, projects and things. Obviously, there's some things I can't talk about because I know it's like uh, reinvent season, season now. So we know that uh, there's a whole bunch of um, releases coming. Uh, I'm very excited for them. Unfortunately, um, like I said, they are still under ND, well, not under NDA because only some they're on NDA. Sorry, just clarifying. Some customers have access to some features in there um, as they're helping us build them, but other than that, I can unfortunately not spin spoil the beans just yet. Um, <clears throat> my uh, twin and compatriot Darko will be joining us into in a little bit. He's just busy finishing up another session. Um, it's interview madness for us. So yeah, um, actually, question on that for those that have joined. Um, this is normally when what we call silly season starts, where there's always a, a mad rush to finish off some projects and things. And also, it's where people are generally very tired because, you know, it's the end of year, you've been working, you haven't had a holiday for a while, and uh, you just want to finish off the project and get it going. So maybe if someone can send, um, tell me about some of the projects they're currently working on, I'm always curious to find out what people are working on. Also, hello and welcome. I do see we've got a couple of people joining. Let me just quickly double check the different channels here. Mm, yeah, it does appear that everything is up and running. So, um, interesting things from my side that I'll be um, looking at the next uh, few um, days, or well, day or two, is we've got an upcoming webinar series um, next week. And we are focusing on basically some getting started content on specifically what's the easiest way you can get started with like containers, a uh, serverless app, as well as a mobile app. So what we've done is we've created a four-part series where in the first part, um, I'm going to go over just the general overview of um, the different components and how we can look at building some apps. Um, and then we're doing a session on Amazon Honeycode, which is a uh, framework that allows you to build mobile applications uh, without coding effectively. It's uh, what's referred to as a low-code or a no-code solution. Um, I'm quite looking forward to that one in terms of being able to build. And the whole premise behind Honeycode is to allow people that are not developers to build a uh, kind of like a line of business mobile application where you drag and drop all the different components, um, build up the app that way. And then uh, for the data, you connect it to a spreadsheet. Um, and it can save to the spreadsheet. And, and when you open up the app, it can actually read from the spreadsheet as well. So it's an interesting um, way to build an application. Um, then uh, my friend and twin Darko is going to do a session on how to use the Edbus CDK to build your first serverless application. Um, <clears throat> now, the reason that is um, uh, interesting is that generally when you think serverless, uh, you think some of the frameworks, for example, the very first one from quite a while back um, that was open, that's open source, it's still open source, um, is uh, the serverless.com framework. Um, then we've got our own ones to, um, that you can use for. You can use the as, as SAM, which is the serverless application um, model, I believe what the AMS stands for, that allows you to bundle it with a whole bunch of things. And then um, you've got, sorry, why do I not want to update my mouse software? Well, thank you. Um, and then you've got a couple other ways. But you always get to a point at some point where the app starts getting a little bit um, more complex and interesting, and um, you need a little bit more control over some of the infrastructure um, that you have to do. Um, cool, sorry, just confirming. Um, OK, I don't think Dark is going to make it. He just let me know that his talk is actually at 12.30, not at 12. Um, so I misunderstood him. Um, but we'll see. Maybe he pops in. We'll ask him. Um, then the, the third and final session is for a new service or CLI tool that we released called Copilot. Um, that is a command line-based uh, tool that allows you to spin up 
um, and run containers uh, very, very easily. So it's even easier than, um, let's say, clicking in the console and spinning up an ECS con uh, cluster or using the um, uh, the console to actually uh, create any of that. So hopefully that that's interesting. Um, if you give me a second, I'll quickly um, get you a link for that. Uh, let me just find it. Uh, wait, I think I have a I made a, a fun link there with not darker in the wood or something because he's been doing. Uh, yes, there we go. Enjoy this URL because Darko has been doing some videos where he walks in the wood, and I decided that this is a much more fun URL than a marketing one. Um, cool. Let's have a look here quickly. Um, uh, I want Lexa. Like yeah, I'm happy that you're excited about uh, uh, Honeycode. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what you're able to do with it and how quickly you're able to do it. Um, because now you should be able to get an app up and running in about 10 minutes. And if you've ever done mobile development, um, you should know that it usually takes you longer than that just to get the Hello World type thing going up with all the different parts of it. Um, also, hello, the Andre. Um, I hope you, uh, you are enjoying your, your socks that I sent you. Um, I was actually surprised that the package got there that quickly. We do expect some photos of you wearing the socks. And at least show us the laptop uh, cover once you've uh, added some of those stickers onto it. Um, yeah, so so far I'm not seeing any questions. Please send me questions. Like I said, Darko is unfortunately not able to join me today. Um, so it would be awesome if uh, uh, you can send me some questions. Otherwise, I will be um, talking about random things for an hour. Now, taking a, a page out of my friend Darko's book, um, until uh, you talk to me about uh, AWS things, I'm going to talk to you about... Uh, this little um, upper arm machine that I have here. So this is, and I discovered in the cupboard, um, my old Toshiba laptop. So it has got a DSUB video out. It's got that composite video out. Um, it does not, it's that old. It does not even have HDMI out, just out of interest. Uh, it's got a DVD writer. Ooh, or DVD rewriter even. Six seconds in Africa, a minute passes. Hmm. I agree. That's 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 very very true. Um, but okay, so I poked around the laptop. Um, this was a, a work laptop, so I realized that back then I was very um, big in splitting work and actual play because I've always had a desktop at home, and on this laptop is literally only things for work. So um, at that point, I was still using Notepad plus plus as my uh, text editor. I had Eclipse on there um, as the IDE. I had Microsoft SQL Server two thousand and five and two thousand and eight installed because that's the database that I did development with. Um, and then what else is on there? That's almost it. I think I've got I've got VLC to be able to um, look at some videos and music files if I needed to, but that's uh, about anything. Um, okay, so what am I using instead of Notepad++? So I've actually gone through a couple of those. I initially, like I said, used Notepad++. Um, then I moved to, what was it, uh, Sublime. I uh, never got into Sublime enough that I wanted to buy it. Um, so I kept using the free version. Then I went on to Atom when Atom came out, out because, you know, everybody uses Atom. Um, it was all the rage. Um, quite enjoyed Atom. Um, it did, however, get very bloated and slow at one point. Um, I know this sometimes happens with Electron apps, um, but they did optimize and, and it's a lot better now. Um, but that kind of was like, I used it a lot, but it got to a point where it was a problem, it was too slow. And then um, Microsoft brought out Visual um, Visual Code, not Visual Studio, Visual Code, um, which is what I'm still running to this day. Um, I'm quite enjoying it. The plugins are great. Um, it does everything I need to do. Um, I've never, I used to be very into keyboard shortcuts and being able to do development without touching the keyboard effectively. Um, but over the years, I've kind of gone over to a lot of the stuff. It, it's it's not just how much code can you churn out in a minute. It, it became a lot more the type of work that I did was with teams, with people, figuring out what the challenges are, figuring out what the technical solution is, discussing that, and then a lot more people are implementing. So I'm back to the pointy, clicky, slow typing um, when I do that. Um, so of interest, um, what IDs or um, text editors are you using? And if you use both, um, I'd be very curious because, like I said, I grew up on... Um, uh, Eclipse. Uh, so probably if I open up Eclipse now, I'll, I'll still remember some of the keyboard shortcuts for Java to automatically populate the class with your getters and setters. And um, what else was there? Uh, automatic constructor creation, where you just put in the uh, parameters um, and all of that. Um, oh, IntelliJ. Uh, awesome, awesome choice. Um, so 
at one point I went over to the Windows world and actually did a whole bunch of, sorry, I'm bumping my desk, a whole bunch of uh, C-sharp development. Um, and at that point I used uh, code uh, Visual Studio, um, so the paid product with uh, ReSharp, and I absolutely love ReSharp as shortcuts as well as the functionality game, and I understand that that's also pretty much the same in um, uh, IntelliJ as well. Um, cool. Awesome. A uh, quick question from Rajat about what the show is about. So this is a weekly session that we do. Normally, it's myself and Darko and one or two guests. And the point of the session is that um, because I'm based all the way down in Cape Town in South Africa, that uh, we make the time available to answer questions um, primarily from people from Africa, given that that's the region I'm looking after. But what we found is that um, it's actually much more fun chatting to everybody. So it's not a, if you're not from Ac Africa, we're not going to talk to you today. Um, but the idea is that you ask me technical questions about AWS and uh, I'll hopefully be able to answer them for you, or at least maybe point you in the right direction, or I can try and find out for you and then we can discuss it in a future show. So the idea is tell me what you are currently working on, tell me where you've got some questions and we tackle them one by one. Um, until then, I also love just talking random tech with people. It's one of the things that I miss the most from not being able to engage with people directly at events and meetups. Um, because it's always fun hearing about what people are building. So please tell me, what are you currently building? What are you having fun with? Um, uh, all of those fun things we want. We'll not, however, go into the more political discussions and talk about tabs versus spaces uh, or Vim versus Emacs, because I do know those get heated uh, over time. So we will just ignore that. Um, but I mean, yeah, like I said, it's like all tech is um, open, but uh, interesting, continuing with the laptop uh, quickly, the, the fun thing that I found with that split that I had is that I was, when I was younger, I was very, very adamant about work is work and play is play. Um, like I said, I had my desktop, and my desktop only had games and whatever I did um, with it back then to play with. Um, uh, play included writing some apps and writing some code, but that was literally for fun. It wasn't for specific work projects or anything like that, um, which is why this laptop is actually so clean. It's like literally, I could probably start dev devving on this one right now. I'm just too scared to plug it into the network because I do know that uh, an unpatched Windows XP machine from, um, I actually can't even tell you when it last booted because the clock has reset that. That's how flat the battery was. Um, it's something that, not something that I want to do at this point until I know better about how to uh, make sure that it doesn't break. And I'm actually quite curious to see what happens when I connect it to the internet with regards to upgrades as well as uh, things going to be um, broken. Um, Rudik's world. Uh, no, what you can look at is, let me pop it here on the screen again. Um, we can potentially start digging into um, honey code. I'm not opposed to it, um, but we can, um, uh, I'll be doing that um, honey code session for next week. It'll be on the, let me just confirm, the Tuesday um, morning at 10 a.m. South African time. Um, so, that's the idea at the moment. Um, like I said, um, I am running on my own today, so I might just open up Honeycode and give you my first impression about the console. I specifically not dug into it for the webinar yet because I want to record it as a first time user with the knowledge that I have about the service up front. Um, cool, let me quickly see. Uh, uh, is this live? Yes, this is indeed live. Um, so if you have any questions, please send them always. And sorry, I still have a little crumb here I see from the cracker that I had over lunch. Apologies for that. It's always embarrassing. Um, and Bildor, uh, what would be the speed difference um, between using AWS in EU versus in Africa from a Nigerian point of view? So that one's always a hard one in, um, for me with regards to what the distance is. I actually haven't run any applications from Nigeria. Um, so the challenge here is that when you think about how to get the or access your applications from wherever they are hosted. Before the Cape Town region, um, we typically hosted our apps in Ireland and uh, South Africans. That was the, the most common one, uh, given the features available as well as the latency, which was about uh, 180 to 210 sec milliseconds, uh, depending on a couple of factors. Now, the reason for that is that at the end of the day, speed of light is the limiting factor. Your bits need to go up, your bits need to come down. So we've got a couple of cables um, the last few years, luckily, in uh, South Africa landing, we've got WAX, uh, which is the West Africa uh, cable system. We've got uh, CECOM. We've got uh, EC or SE. I can't remember how to pronounce it, which is the East Coast cable. We've got uh, the old SAT3 cable, which used to be our only undersea fiber cable. Um, and I do believe there are actually a few others um, out there as well. Um, and the challenge now is that that is a physical cable. So it runs from... It probably lands in, if I have to guess, somewhere in um, Nigeria, probably in Lagos. And then it goes up further 
um, all the way up to, I believe it connects in London and as well as a couple of other countries on the way and also comes down again, connects down in Cape Town. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't connect in Cape Town, it connects in Melkbos or in Durban. I remember that vaguely. So what it boils down to is like, what is going to happen in terms of the total distance? Because let's say we use an example where, um, for some reason, I think it connects in Durban and not in Cape Town. But if that's the case, it means that the cable goes around Africa. Um, so Nigeria is up here. Sorry, I don't have a map now for you. But it goes, it goes around Africa like that all the way around to the other side where it gets to Durban, which means that if you want to send your data from Nigeria, it goes, does that traversal around, goes past Cape Town up to Durban, and from Durban, it comes down again to Cape Town over fiber cables over the um, the land. Now, that means that it's the, the distance between Cape Town and Durban is an, index, uh, an additional couple of milliseconds. I think that's about, if I have to thumb suck, and please, this is thumb suck, I have no data. It's probably about 11 to 15 milliseconds because i know cape down to joburg optimal is about 15 but it, it can go up to 19 20 um and the distance is a bit less to durban um so then you multiply that by two at least because it's from cape town to durban and durban to cape town because remember you get coming around and then coming back down again so that's at least 30 40 milliseconds um once again thumb sucking um which means that i would estimate the latency then from nigeria to cape town this is purely now me trying to project what the distance from Nigeria to Cape Town is versus Cape Town to uh, Ireland. So I would expect the lady is still lower. Uh, but there are a lot of factors. Like I said, for example, the, the cables and which um, route you're taking through them. Um, so that's unfortunately the, the best answer that I can give you at this point. What I would recommend is why don't you use the free tier and actually spin up an instance in Cape Town and spin up an instance in um, uh, Ireland and do some tests. You can do easy API um, pull tests or just do pings and see what the latency is like. That's probably the easiest way to just get a feel for this. Um, unfortunately, it's one of those, I'm trying to think if there's a way for me to do it. Um, not an easy way, because I, I don't have a mechanism to actually run any command from inside Nigeria at the moment. Um, I don't have a VPN. That is because the VPN app that I use is only has a node or app exit node in South Africa. Cool. Um, I hope that helped. Please let me know if you've got more questions. Um, and then for the rest of us, I do see we've got a couple more people joining. Welcome. Um, today's session for the AWS Africa office hours, uh, which you can't even see the background because this is how StreamYard works, um, is going to be just me on my own. Um, uh, unfortunately, Dark is not able to join us. and. Uh, um, so it'll be me talking about random things. So what I would really appreciate is if you keep sending me some questions because I love talking about random tech and also obviously love talking about AWS. So please ask me AWS questions, but I'm also happy to take general questions. Um, another question quick. Um, this question, which is the Dino of LightSail will be getting a Cape Town region in the near future. Um, so just quick clarification, Cape, um, um, the question around there is my understanding is that you want to know when LightSail will be launching inside uh, Cape Town. Uh, sorry, switch that off. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, I can't tell you because I literally do not know. So when we launch a new region, um, we do launch with a whole bunch of services um, based on what our customer feedback is. It's not like we've got a, these are the 10 services we have to launch on day one when it goes open for every single reason, a region. Every region is different. Um, they have different requirements. We've got different customers. We work with those customer requirements and figure out what are the main services to launch first. Then what happens is over time, we continuously launch the services in the different regions where it makes sense and also uh, where there's demand. So the best recommendation I can give you, if you're interested in light sale, please reach out to your account manager or uh, if you know solution architect and ask them, hey, can you please tag us and explain to them what it is you're trying to build? Because then what we do is internally, we've got a tool where we log this and we say, listen, well, customer X has asked us to use light sale. This is the use case. Um, and the more people that ask, the, the higher uh, priority it'll get in terms of uh, being rolled out. Um, sometimes what will also happen is uh, some services have inter-service inter dependencies on other services. And what you'll see happen is that it'll take a while for, let's say, a specific service to come out, and all of a sudden afterwards we have a whole host of other services coming out. Um, that's just the way we build our services. And unfortunately, like I said, there is no public um, roadmap and no public uh, timeline on this um, in that I know even because, in general, I don't have access to those kind of timelines. Um, Cool, this is, oh yes, uh, this is actually a good call out from, from um, Arnie. Um, 
Uh, you can use this site, uh, speedtest the global accelerator at AWS to actually um, check the latency. So have a look at that. That would be uh, fun. Um, it'll be interesting to see if you're able to actually spin this up and actually um, run it uh, f from Nigeria. That would be an interesting question. Let me just quickly check something. Um, and that'll be, the, like I said, that'll be the most interesting one because it would be fun to be able to sp spin up just a virtual machine quickly somewhere in Nigeria and then do some things from there. Um, I'll take a look at it and see if I can play and um, find some values because it'd be fun to do that from a couple of countries in Africa to just a, a, a feel for what's what's happening there. Um, cool. Let me just have a look here quickly. I don't see any more questions over here. Um, Boom, let me just double, sorry, I'm just double, double checking that I didn't uh, miss anything over here yet. Uh, no, what I do want to do then is that since we're talking about internet and undersea cables, let me quickly see if I can pop up that map for you because it's 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 quite interesting. Um, I think it's, uh, was it under uh, sea cables, uh, internet, remember there's a site, it's got, uh, Ah, there we go. Let me pop it on the screen. Share screen, that side, share. Okay, here we go. What's up? Um, so what we can see over here is that this is, uh, let's just accept the cookies, um, a global map of all the different um, cables that we have under the sea. And if you zoom in, you can obviously see between the US and Europe, uh, there are quite a number of cables going. Now, if you look down here, uh, to what's going on with Africa. We actually have quite a number. So what we have over here, let me just see if I can, can I click on it? Let me see. Okay, so that is the Huawei, Equinox Huawei um, cable uh, from what I understand. And you can see there where it lands. And you can see this one actually, it lands here in Melkos. Um, and we actually have some more cables Let's have a look. Sorry, that's the same one. Huawei Equinox. Uh, this one is the interesting. It keeps getting the same one. This is a little bit annoying. Let's just see. Can I? What is this one? There we go. That's the wax cable. Um, so you can see where it lands. So, for example, the wax over here, if I zoom in, I can see that it actually lands here in um, Lagos. And I can see that most of the cables actually one, two, three. Let's make it easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cables uh, land there, which is quite impressive. If you think about, um, oh, this, oh, this is interesting. I don't know about this one. There is a cable that is going from Cameroon directly to. Actually, my geography is bad. Is this Brazil somewhere? Yeah, to Brazil. Wow, that's interesting. And similarly, there is one going from Brazil directly to Angola. That is super fascinating. I did not know this. Um, well, today I learned something. Um, so this is where you can see the different um, uh, cables on the sea. And now if we look at this one, so this is what I was talking about earlier. So Durban is somewhere up around here. So here we can see um, this purple cable or pink cable. What, let's see which cable is this. This is the safe cable that goes from Sri Lanka and Malaysia uh, to Durban and Cape Town. Interesting. But okay, so getting back to the original question around um, latency between Cape Town and Nigeria. So my an assumption was not right. It doesn't actually land in Durban. It actually lands here in Cape Town or just outside of Cape Town. You can see um, we've got some cables landing a little bit more north from Cape Town. So that would mean that we would have to measure the latency from Cape Town to, for example, um, uh, uh, Nigeria over here. So what I think, let me just quickly stop this for a second, is I can, um, what's going to be the easiest thing to deploy? Let me see. Let me see. Um, let's spin up some instances because literally I don't see any questions coming in. So um, I am going to fire up my console quickly. So I'm going to log in um, and then I will spin up a instance in Ireland and I'll spin up an instance in uh, Cape Town and then what we can do is we can actually uh, set up the firewall rules and see how that works. Um, so uh, let me just quickly log in. Uh, I need to be able to see past my microphone. Cool. Um,
we are good to go. Let's add this back to the stream. Putting some code up here, hide that, make it a little bit bigger. Um, so what I want to do is, what's going to be the quickest? Um, so now I'm challenged because do I want to go just clicky clicky or do I want to do it with Terraform quickly? Um, I will take a slow sip of my water. Quick, quickly tell me in the chat, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just click on the console to get them up and running? Or should I show you how quickly you can spin up two instances with Terraform? Go on, let me quickly scroll down. Let's see. No opinions. Come now. I want some opinions. Terraform, Terraform, Terraform. Um, William Dampier, CDK. I would love to, but I am not that well versed in CDK. I can use them. Um, I haven't actually spun up too many projects. I've got one that I play with in different facets, but uh, uh, let's go for Terraform then. Okay, so if I were to do Terraform, what I will need to do is I will need to go to Cloud9. I should have a uh, uh, Terraform, uh, an environment over here. This one. Let's pick this one. So this is the account that I used for the, the developer Let's Code series that we did. Um, and um, Cloud9 is just a web-based IDE. So let's go to terraform.io uh, so long so we can actually grab the binary. Uh, download, there we go. Where are we now? 64 bits. Ooh, 13.5. Copy link address. Awesome. Cool. Okay, let's see. Uh, the environment is busy just starting up. Um, let's give it a few seconds here. So first thing just to know is that I won't be setting up any credentials. I don't have to because this Cloud9 instance is running on an EC2 instance. Um, I can actually show you behind the scenes quickly. Uh, well, not really behind the scenes because you can also see this. Um, if you go into the EC2 console, what you can see over here is that um, We've got this instance running still. Oh, this one should probably be shut off. Sorry, luckily it's a small one. Uh, hackathon, I can't remember what I did with it, so let's just terminate it. Um, so this Cloud9 instance over here, uh, there we go, is literally, this is where Cloud9 runs. It spins up EC2 instance, and that EC2 instance has got an IAM role um, associated with it. Okay, cool. We have got 32 minutes left for this. So let's quickly see. My environment is back up and running and cool. Okay, let me just move my mic. Sorry, I'm going to put it up here. Oh, my mic got a new little fuzzy hat, which is uh, quite fun. I, can't, um, I keep wanting to touch and play with it. It feels like a little hamster, which I had as a kid. Uh, cool. So we want to get uh, Terraform. So let's go and go ahead and grab the zip file. Uh, we need to unzip it. Um, grab unzip. Yeah, I do. Uh, and then we're going to move Terraform into a. Come now. Oh, sorry. Let's so move Terraform into a folder that is on our path. So user, uh, and my user bin is usually one. Cool, and then get rid of the zip file. Cool, make it a um, uh, office hours demo. Cool. Now I want to touch uh, providers or tips. So Terraform basically um, anything with a .tf extension in a folder will. Um, uh, work for it. Um, sorry, it'll take the .tf files and actually use that and run that. So um, I'm splitting it into multiple files. So let's quickly do one um, in call uh, cpt.tf and uh, the other one will be dublin.tf. Cool. Okay, uh, there's the demo, office hours demo, CPT, boom, 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 open all of those things. Okay, cool. So firstly on the providers, this is now where the fun comes in, uh, Terraform um, uh, EC2, uh, boom. We can just grab the example over here. This is, uh, oh, it's a module, sorry. I want uh, the AWS. EC2, so I can see the resource because Terraform has some awesome documentation. So you can typically just copy and paste. And I know they did update it recently for um, the latest 20, version 20 of Ubuntu. So cool. providers over here, let's just uh, grab that. Uh, we're going to take this over here and plonk that in there and plonk that in there. So what have we got here? We have got the provider that we're configuring for AWS. And we are going to run it in EU West 1, which is uh, Dublin. So let's just put a comment there. Uh, Dublin, Ireland, over there. And then we need a second one of these. And this is where the fund with Terraform starts coming in for um, uh, Cape Town. So let's just give it a comment. Uh, Cape Town, uh, Spanish, so, oh, Africa. 
Oh, uh, and that is AF South one. However, I do need to get the second provider an alias. So um, reform alias provider. You're now seeing all the things that I don't uh, remember Googling. Uh, provider configuration. There we go. Alias multiple configurations. Oh, it's just alias. Cool. Uh, so we're going to call this. Uh, uh, I don't want the inserts. Alias. Um, uh, let's make it ZA. Um, cool. Okay. So now I've got my two providers configured. Now let's go jump into the actual thing that we're going to be spinning up. So if I don't specify an, um, a, a provider, it'll use the, the first one that I defined without an alias. So let's use the Dublin one for that. So what we've got over here is that we are using a data source to do a lookup um, um, for a, an AMI, and it's going to search for a specific AMI with that string with a wildcard at the end, because typically when Canonical release these AMIs, uh, they suffix them with um, uh, the date. Uh, then we can just filter by the virtualization type, which is HVM, and also super important when you do this kind of search, know which account you're pulling it from, because remember, I can go create an AMI with that actual name and publish it publicly, and I can install whatever I want on it, and when you bring it up, I can, have, for example, have code running on it. So always be careful and be aware of where you get your uh, AMI from. It's similar to a Docker container. You don't just go grab any random Docker container that's public and run it on your production system. You only run ones that are that you know where they come from or come from official providers like I said, Canonical or AWS or um, companies like that. Cool. So that's going to find us an AMI for that specific version of Ubuntu up there. Um, we are going to spin up a specific um, instance, which is going to go through a T2, T, T3 micro. Uh, we're going to change the name to, um, let's make it a little bit of fun, emoji uh, flag uh, Ireland. I'm assuming there's an emoji flag for Ireland. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me go and copy that. Because um, the fun part here is that for those that are not familiar, you can actually, wait, what's going on here? Uh, hmm, interesting. That does not look like what I would expect it to be. Oh, that sucks. Let's see. Eh, just letters in this case. Okay, um, what else shall we use then? Uh, I always love the rocket emoji. Uh, boom. We'll just copy that one in there, just to make it a little bit more fun. Uh, we can call this uh, Ireland. And Cape Town, I'm just going to paste that in there so I don't lose, lose my rockets. Uh, Cape Town over there. Cool. So basically what we have now is we're going to search for an AMD and we've got, we are going to spin up an EC2 instance. However, this EC2 instance won't have a security group around it and it will not have um, a, an SSH key that we can use. So let us quickly solve those two things first. Um, let's go to uh, EC2 and I can go down here to where are the SSH keys, uh, key pairs over there, uh, create a key pair. Um, and what we're going to call this key pair is uh, office hours. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use PEM. Yeah, I've got a Windows, uh, I've got a Linux machine, a VM here that I can use. Sorry, just the difference between PPK and PEM is the formatting of the key. You can actually uh, convert them between the different two if you need to. Um, Patty is obviously a Windows based uh, SSH app. Actually, let's go that entire route and I can show you the whole shebang. Um, automatically downloaded the uh, key. So now what I can do is over here, um, I can say key pairs, and I'm going to uh, create, uh, let's just touch uh, uh, key pairs.tf because I need to be able to reference this when I add it to the instance. So that's the name, uh, Terraform uh, AWS um, uh, key pair. So see what we have over here. Uh, this is a, as a resource. Now we want the data source, not the resource. Uh, so let's go to the top over here. Um, resources, data sources. Uh, this is AWS key pair. Uh, There's no way to do it. Okay. Let us go back to over here um, and check how do we specify a key pair inside. Um, here we go, key name, awesome, cool. So that is what we want, optionally the name. Uh, we can pop it in here, uh, so we don't need this file, Cape Town. Over here, we're going to say that is equal to uh, var dot, uh, uh, key pair name. Um, 
Let's change this one to variables.tf. The reason that I would use a variable is just best practice. Um, we can go uh, close tab, uh, variable, um, copy that name quickly. This one, keep in name, pop it in here, that, that, um, and we gave it <clears throat> type is equal to string, and the default is equal to, uh, we call it office hours over here. Let's pop it in there. Um, also, please feel free to ask me questions as we go along. Like I said, I'm quickly just spinning this up. Um, cool. Default, uh, we've got the key pair. We've defined it. We've got it here in the Cape Town one. We need to give it here to the Dublin one. Dublin one as well. If I can double click, put it in there. Uh, quick, another fun thing with Terraform is it's got this awesome command called format, like this FMT, which will actually take the files and, and format it with a, an opinionated way of doing it. So please make use of that if you do play with Terraform. Cool. So we've got this, 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 and this. Uh, now we need to quickly create a security group. Um, security group. Um, uh, where we go. Is it on a VPC? Resource AWS security group. Yeah, there we go. Uh, actually, we're going to go down here to grab this example. This is my, uh, okay, they don't have that anymore. You want to split the security group and the security group rules. The reason is that when you change the ingress or the egress as specified over here, um, it means that you can, uh, you need to recreate the security group when you want to change them. So it's always good to do it separately. So let's grab this quickly. Um, pop this in here. Um, and I'm going to rip out this part because there will be a separate rule. Um, actually, let me look at time. Let me not do this. Let me do the security group by hand. The reason is that I need to also do a VPC and I don't want to spend too much time actually spinning this up. Okay, so we've got our instances. We've got um, our key pair defined. Uh, let's go ahead and do a Terraform plan and see how far we are with uh, typos and things we broke. Terraform plan, um, line 17 in Dublin. What is in line 17 Dublin? Um, oh, I need to give them unique names. Okay, cool. Uh, so this will be Ubuntu dub, and this will be uh, web dub, because the variables need to be uh, today. Uh, lost algorithm, yes, unfortunately, Darko has got a session. He might be joining for the last few minutes today, but um, currently it's doubtful. Cool. Um, so now what I didn't do, however, is actually use that alias. So let's go over here and say, um, and just go, because the Cape Town on would use the Dublin um, provider because I didn't specify it. So Terraf Terraform um, alias providers. Jump to this one again. Default. Uh, there we go. I just need to add that in. So now what we're going to do is for the Cape Town ones um, over here, we need to say the providers AWS dot. Uh, what do I call it? Was it ZA? Or was it CPT? Uh, ZA. So AWS dot ZA. Cool. Let's grab that. We also needed to add it here for our lookup. So this will make sure that both of these now happen uh, inside um, the Cape Town region. So let's go ahead and say plan. Um, oh, Terraform init. And it's the first time you have to run this. We're not going to be setting up a back end for this today because this is very much YOLO. Um, let's do plan now and see what it says. Hopefully it won't complain. Input variable the name, key pair name has not been declared. This variable can be cleared with Variable key pen. Did I make a typo? Variables. Oh, hit save. Always save because otherwise I can't read the save file content. So yeah. Um, cool. What does it say? Validating credentials can get caller identity, including the request invalid. Um, now I've got to think for a second. This is often due to the way that uh, the permission on Cloud9 is done, um, but I can fix that by going to that EC2 instance. So Cloud9 actually has got an interesting way with, that it handles the credentials. Now, there's a very good chance that I might break this instance when I do this quickly, but uh, at least it'll be fun and interesting, hopefully. Running instances, uh, Cloud9, let's do something over here. Instance settings, um, security, uh, modify IAM role, choose an IAM role. Um, uh, Let's take that role. Oh, actually, let's go create and create a new one quickly, just to make sure that we've got admin rights on this one. I don't want to have any issues today. It's much easier to just do that. Uh, create role, uh, AWS service, uh, EC2. Next, uh, let's just check. Uh, yeah, next permissions. 
Come on. Where am I? Oh, I'm running global. Uh, administrator access. Next. No tags. Name. Um, office hours. Boom. Create role. Now we've got a role that is allowing admin access. Let's refresh this. Grab that. Save. Um, doesn't have an instance profile error in. That doesn't sound right. There we go. Oh, sorry, just took a second. Cool. Okay. Um, so we have now attached that to our instance. Um, let me just quickly double check what's going to happen. There we go. Cool. Um, credentials, your access might be restricted. Okay. So that's possibly where I might have broken my access now. Let's just quickly see if it's kicked in. Normally it takes a few seconds before the iron values goes in. Uh, let's just see what it says here. His guide, welcome. Uh, uh, let's change. Uh, oh, let's just go search for it. Sorry. Cloud nine, I am roll. There we go. Um, bump, there we go. Environment, all of those bits. Um, let's have those. Tuk, 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 tuk. So look over here. This doesn't help me. So I'm just quickly scrolling and eyeballing here what the options are with changing it to use a um, customer managed policy. Um, managed policy. Tuck, 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 tuck. That should be fine. Should be fine. It, my understanding is this should have kicked in. Let me just double check again. Sorry, it does sometimes take a few seconds before the first credential set is available on the instance. Um, no. Hmm. Cool. Uh, let me do this. Pop this up there uh, and see. Uh, there we go. Let's see. And this is how, like I said, I, I had a, um, a an instance up and running. I'm going to give this another two, three minutes to do. If it doesn't work by the end of that, then I'm going to just go do it manually by hand quickly. Uh, we don't want to definitely, don't want to use access keys. Um, let's have a look over here. Don't have a variable file, that's fine. This doesn't look like anything that I'm... Uh, let's put Cloud9 over here as well. There we go. Um, for, nope, sorry, it doesn't include Cloud9. There we go, now it includes Cloud9. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, no. Okay, one more time, hopefully. If I set that, sorry, my brain is just working quickly. It should, it should actually pick it up, but I remember there's something I need to change on it. Um, okay, never mind. Let us do it the old fashioned way by hand. Um, I am in Ireland, I'm in the EC2 section. I'm gonna launch an instance, um, cool. I'm just gonna pick, uh, uh, Ubuntu server, we're going to just run through these. Uh, yeah, into details, next, uh, 111, no IAM role, public subnet, yep, that's all good, add storage, use the default, add tags, um, add tag name, that's ours, cool, for us. Security group, uh, select an existing security group. Uh, yeah, let's just create a new one quickly. Uh, office hours. Uh, we are going to let uh, SSH in, we are going to let um, HTTP in, and we are going to let in ICMP. Um, cool, zero, 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 slash zero, cool. Uh, that means I can SSH in. We can spin up a quick Docker web container to do it. Um, uh, yeah, William Dap Dapier. So the, the credentials, normally it's not. It's just remember that Cloud9 does things in a very different way in terms of under the hood, how it uses the IAM roles and credentials and rotates them for you. Um, I have set this up in the past. I literally just forgot what the what to search for. This is me just not remembering how to configure it. Normally, if you're in, just interacting with a single account and not um doing it like i'm doing it with multiple providers in terraform it shouldn't be an issue um 
So we've got that, 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 that review and launch, launched that one. Um, choose a key pair. Uh, office hours, cool. I acknowledge launch instance. So while this one is launching, we are going to say, let's go open up another tab for this. Uh, we are going to go to Cape Town. I don't know if I've enabled Cape Town. This is going to be a very big face palm. <gasps> I have not. Um, this is going to fail because this is an internal account. Ah, uh, lowly. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, this will fail. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to enable it. Yeah, see, I don't have permissions. Um, what I can do is let me quickly go here on the right onto my work laptop for a second. Uh, to log in. Cool. Cool. Sorry, so just if you were curious, these are accounts that we vend with an internal tool that has got some uh, security monitoring and systems in place that make sure that the account is compliant with whatever we're doing. So now I just need to go in and actually enable it over there. So click that. There's my Yubi key. And Dun 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 dun. Okay, this is that one. Manage accounts. Yup yup yup. I have too many accounts. No, not develop it. There we go. Let's say view edits. Uh, cool. Opt in new region. AF South one add. Cool. Let us see what happens now. If I go back. Cool. Okay. So this is busy preparing. So this normally takes a minute or two. While that is going, uh, let us go ahead and get putty for Windows because um, I haven't used it. Uh, yeah, it's downloaded Putty. Uh, I know you've got SSH built into PowerShell, but I think that version of SSH might need. Um, well, once again, let's test. Today is a fun day for testing things. Boom. Okay. Um, uh, temp. Cool. Copy. Uh, can I do this? Oh, I can. Uh, Office RSP to over here. Um, and now I can say SH I uh, office hours PPK uh, Ubuntu at, and let's grab that IP. I'm not convinced this is going to work, just as a heads up. And sorry if it's too small. Um, let me make that bigger quickly. Properties, layout, font, uh, 20 should be good. No, 20 is not good enough yet. Properties, uh, 36. Boom. So, okay. That should be a bit better in terms of being able to see what I'm doing. Cool. So I'm going to try and essay with this. My gut feel tells me that we won't be able to do that because um, the fact that, there we go, copy that one, um, it's a, a PPK format, which is PuTTY. Um, and I think this uses a SSH client that uh, can use an all PEM file. So let's quickly see what happens. Uh, yes. Uh, unprotected key file. Eh, okay. Um, now I need to do chmod 400 uh, office hours. Cool. Uh, chmod is not allowed. Um, how do I do this on Windows? Uh, well, let's Google. You're learning today. Uh, Windows Power uh, Power Shell SSH. Um, Permission. Yep, that looks good. SHV, ver, blah, 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 blah. Let's see if we can answer. Uh, properties, security tab, click advanced. Cool. Um, sorry, that, that combination. Uh, cool. Properties, uh, security. Let's see what they want. Um, Change the owner to you, disable inheritance. Okay, I'm just going to do it over here because there are some account details they said we shouldn't, shouldn't share. Um, Grant yourself full control. Okay, let's do this advanced. Uh, where is Quibus? There. Owner. Yeah, that's fine. 
locate the file, right click properly, navigate, change the owner to U, that's already done, disable inheritance and delete all permissions. Uh, okay, disable inheritance, uh, remove all inheritance, yep, there's that. That looks like, yeah, this will be interesting. Let's see if that worked. PowerShell, cool. Oh. Well, let's just run this again. Code key permission denied. Mm, I don't think it's going to work. Okay, let's go to the battery route. So I'm fairly certain that'll work. Uh, 64 bits. Uh, yeah, let's just get the binary quick. It'll make it simpler. Cool, putty. Cool. We are going for Ubuntu at. Uh, yeah, I select that, and now I need to go. Wow, this has been a few years. Uh, SSH. Uh, KX, no host key, no. Uh, I remember it's in here somewhere. We don't specify the key. There we go. Add key. Uh, hmm. So. Uh, how to how to this latency uh, builder? What I want is that um, if you can do a ping, um, I'm hoping you are based in Nigeria. Um, we can see if somebody's going to do be able to do the ping for us. Um, I just remember how to use Patty. Uh, this has been a while. Uh, SSH. Uh, ooh, not host keys. Auth. Uh, yeah, here we go. Browse. Um, uh, yeah, let's just grab that one. Cool. And. Let's put it over here, the session. Uh, we're going to call this Dublin. Save, open. Does this work? Yes, we want to fingerprint it. Authenticating, boom, we are in. Awesome source. Um, no, so Baldor, I don't have a VPN to Nigeria. I'm just curious to see what the latency would be like. Um, if anybody can test it, if we can find a tool, because that'll be the next step. Cool. So we've got our instance up and running. I am connecting to it uh, over here. So let's pop this on this side. Let's go back to our console over here um, and refresh this and see if our region is back up and running. It is. I'm not going to go very quick and do the exact same as I did previously, which is launch an instance. Um, I'm going to choose Ubuntu, that version. Uh, T3 Nano. Let's use a micro for the free tier. Next. Uh, bup, 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 bup. That all looks good. Storage. Storage fine, uh, tag, a name, Cape Town, next, uh, create one. So uh, security groups are specific to a, a VPC and a region, so you can't just reuse it. So we're just going to call this one uh, Office Hours. Um, and let's get rid of that. SSH, we want HTTP, we want uh, ICMP v4. And we want this from anywhere. Uh, review and launch. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, description. Uh, something. Uh, review and launch. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't. Uh, it's going to ask me for the key now. Cool. Choose an existing key pair. Can I? No, I need a, a create new key pair. Office hours. ZA. Download. Launch. Cool. Uh, launch fail. Um, Ah, I'm being too quick. Uh, normally results in a few minutes, and I'll have to because this is now a new account. So this is what happens when you enable the region for the first time. You won't be able to launch um, that quickly. Um, okay, so Bulldor is actually located in Europe. Um, huh. Let's see what have we got. Um, there's uh, something test ping from Nigeria. Maybe there's a service we can use for that. Uh, Nigeria's Mobile internet speed tests, uh, ping time between Lagos and other cities. Uh, this looks interesting. Let's see what the site tells us. Uh, oh, okay, cool. We can get some information here. Um, let's see. Uh, Cape Town, here we go. So it's 5,000, almost 5,000 kilometers. We're expecting a ping of 109 milliseconds. Uh, nowhere in Bulldor, this is, I mean, um, this is literally what I'm here for. I didn't get any other interesting questions. Um, but hopefully this is still useful and entertaining to people as I try and build something and do something. Um, so Cape Town is, um, let's see what, what does it look like when I open up this page? Uh, oh no, no, it just opens another one. Okay. So Cape Town is 4775 and it's about hundred, let's say 110 milliseconds rounding up. 
Now, if I look for uh, Dublin, it is, oh, it's very close. So this is an unfortunate thing with when, you know, physics come into play is that uh, it's 100 and, 109 and a half milliseconds versus 117.4 milliseconds. Now, that doesn't make a big difference. I mean, that in the end is like, what, eight milliseconds between the two. Um, awesome. I'm glad I can entertain you. So the, the short answer here is so pick the one that makes the most sense for you. Now, gut feel here tells me if you are serving customers in Nigeria, um, you might not be dealing with data residency in terms of having an option from uh, as either Dublin or um, or Cape Town. Um, because remember, if you're if those are the two options, neither of them are in the country. So in theory, I don't think that should factor into your decision. Uh, which then means it boils down to uh, price as well as features. And Dublin has been running much longer than uh, Cape Town, so it has more of our services and features available. Um, and also because of scale, um, um, I do believe Dublin is probably cheaper than Cape Town because remember, each of our regions do have different pricing available. Um, so bottom line, unfortunately, that's it. Um, what would be interesting to see here quickly is that uh, what's the average ping? Where's the fastest? Um, Lisbon, Madrid. This is actually good news because remember we are launching um, a region in Spain um, in I think 2022 or 2023. Um, so that does appear to shave off a bit. Um, I, we don't have a region in Portugal. Uh, what else have we got? London. We've got a region in London. So London once again. But remember this is now shaving off 20 milliseconds. So that might be worth it. So figure out figure out if that is worth worthwhile for you to do that. Um, thereafter, like I said, it becomes uh, interesting. Paris is, wow, this is not fun if you think ge geography. Um, Paris is closer than, in terms of latency, than Dublin, because that's a good 16 milliseconds fast already. Um, let's get a map out. Maps. Uh, wait, map of the Earth. Uh, Let's just go to Google Earth quickly. Sorry, it's been a while. I haven't been here for a while. Uh, launch Earth. Let's see what happens. I have not used Google Earth in years. Uh, let's clean this up quickly. Uh, which would launch? Sorry, the reason I don't want to just launch um, Google uh, Maps is that I don't particularly want to share my um, location. Okay, so if you think. So this is fascinating. So we're coming around from here at the bottom and we're going up. Now, obviously, Portugal, Portugal being the closest makes sense. Spain being the second closest may also makes sense uh, from there. But I mean, going up here to there, France, then to Dublin, that that interesting because I mean, visually, that distance looks roughly the same to me, but there's definitely a short route. Similarly, that it's faster to um, uh, London over there than it is to Dublin. That is that is super interesting. I'd, I'd be curious to understand. Maybe uh, where's our undersea cable? Uh, let's see where's that, where to go. Where to go? First one. Let's see if our undersea cables can uh, can spread some information on this. Yes, here we go. Mm -hmm. So this is where things get interesting. So what, you, what I can see over here is that because I was curious because it felt like the distance um, from here to, for example, France and to London and to Ireland should be the same. But what you can see is that they actually come in here to Portugal as well as to Spain over here. And then from there, they hop out again. So because of then that, that second curl around going into those places in Europe is actually shorter than the bigger curl that goes up to um, uh, Ireland, which I do see that it looks like it first goes to the UK and then from the UK to Ireland. And that, that's then why it explains that extra latency because like I said at the beginning when we spoke about this is speed of light is not your friend. Um, oh, we are on the hour. I do have to apologize. I hope you found this um, entertaining and fun, but we do have another session that is starting now on the hour by Sohan. Um, yeah, Mar uh, Marcia, I hope you found it useful um, looking at geography and un undersea cables. Uh, but at least now we understand why that latency is different. Um, this is awesome for me because I did not know this and I learned now as well for future discussions. But I have to say thank you very much for joining and I hope this was at least a little bit entertaining. I need to hop off the stream now because we are going into the uh, Benny Lux office hours, I believe now, if anybody's keen to join that. Um, stick around. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Bye.